Welcome guys to this video and in this video I want to talk to you guys about uh, the different settings that you should use on your GH5, GH5S. I know that I get a lot of questions about to use 8-bit, 10-bit, long gop, all I. Well I think this video should explain that. Um, do you remember back in the day this camera here, the GH4? Now this camera was a workhorse. I mean it did everything. The, the problem with this camera, though, was when you try to shoot 1080, the pixel binning that this camera would do was so bad that the image would get so soft and practically unusable. So basically, all you would do is shoot 4K and downscale it in post to 1080, okay? Because shooting 1080 on this, on this camera was just kind of pointless because it was just so soft and mushy. Then, all of a sudden, here comes the GH5 game changer now you can shoot in 1080 or 4k and the quality is pretty good either way the video that i am uh shooting right now is on the new gh5s now this is the new low light camera beast when i first heard about this camera i wasn't sure if i wanted to buy it or not because it didn't have ibis and i was like i'm gonna miss it I was like, but I do need the low light uh, capabilities of the camera. So I went ahead and got it. And boy, has it been a game changer for me because all the low light stuff that I do, um, this camera has just come through for me in spades. Now, uh, because of the fact that typically it's on a gimbal, I don't miss the IBIS and I hardly ever use the uh, stabilizations in the lens because of the fact that it's sitting on a gimbal. As a matter of fact, a lot of times if I do turn the lens stabilizer on while it's on a gimbal, it kind of acts a little funky and kind of fights it a little bit. So it's, it's best to not even have it on at all. Okay, with that in mind, I want to show you uh, some different settings and what I think uh, might help you to decide what you need to use on your project. Okay. on uh, I have some clips here I want to show you. This clip is 4K, 150 megabits per second, 420 long gop at 60p. Okay, If you look at all the macro blocking in here, it's just absolutely horrendous. Okay, In this clip, the macro blocking that you see in the sky is just basically unusable. And the reason being is because it is shot in 8-bit. Now here's where uh, this is going to really help you. Because first of all, it's like, do I shoot 10-bit, 8-bit, 400 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, 150 megabits per second? Well, from doing my tests, here's what I've found. I found that the difference doesn't rely so much on data rate, whether you shoot 100, 150, or 400 all I. The difference is massive in the fact that whether you shoot 8-bit or 10-bit, okay? Here is 8-bit footage, of course, right here. Macro blocking galore. It's unusable, especially when you shoot, you know, soft gradients like the sky. It's just horrible. When you shoot, you know, obviously, if you look in this image and you see, you know, the trash cans, the trees, the building, whatnot, um, it doesn't matter so much. But any time that there is, like, these soft gradients sky this is where the flaws in the codec show up now i'm talking about vlog because vlog is where you're going to need uh a lot of meat in the image to be able to do a proper grade okay so here i want to show you something here is 4k 422 400 megabits per second now look at that all the macro blocking pretty much disappeared for the most part okay so you went from this horrendous macro blocking, okay, to this, which pretty much goes away. And this is at 4K, 400 megabits per second. Okay, now this is what I want to show you. Now this is at 400 all I. Now if we jump to 150 megabits per second long got 422, but still 10 bit, well guess what? To me, to my eye, it looks a little smoother. I think that has something to do with the fact that it's long gop and maybe the compression actually adds a little bit of smoothing, but to my eye, it looks cleaner, okay? It doesn't have as much meat in the file because it's only 150 megabytes 
as opposed to 400 all I, but to me it looks smoother. So that's gonna be a major factor for you deciding on what you use for your project. Okay, now let me go back to now 4K 100 megabits per second 24P and see if that makes a difference. Again, you're gonna see macro blocking, obviously not as much as 60P because you don't have to divide the, the data rate over 60 frames. You're now dividing the data rate over 24 frames. So you're getting a little bit more meat in each, in each uh, frame. But this is what I wanna show you. I did some tests where I had an external recorder and I was trying to shoot uh, 60P, I believe, um, out the HDMI spigot into uh, an Atomos uh, recorder. But I still found that in the sky there was macro blocking. So for some reason, I don't know if the HDMI is spitting out a 10-bit signal or if it's still 8-bit. I would like. I tend to think it's still 8-bit. I don't know this for a fact, but it just did not improve the image. So it was pointless for me to even go to an external recorder because I didn't see a difference whether I was shooting internally or externally. Now, what I tried was now 1080 at 10 bit. And uh, this is the 60 frames per second, 200 megabits, all I. Now I wanna show you the 1080, 100 megabits per second, 422 long op. Now when I look at this image, that to me almost is smoother than the 200 megabits all I. Again, it could be something with the long op where it's actually you know softening the file just a hair. But to me, the file looks so good at 1080 that I would not be opposed to shooting 1080 from now on with this camera and just not even looking at the 4K. Because this monitor is a 5K monitor and looking at these 1080 files, it looks sharper and, and better to me than the 4K files, believe it or not. And then as a, as a little test here, here's a 1080, uh, 100 megabits per second, 420 long gop at 60 frames. Again, because now we are back in 8-bit, you're getting the, the nasty macro blocking back in the sky. So what have we learned? Well, we have learned a couple things here. The difference in the image on the GH5S and the GH5 is not so much the data rate, but 8-bit versus 10-bit. So to me, it doesn't matter if you're shooting at 100 megabits per second, 150, 400. What makes the difference, especially in V-Log? Now, it won't make as much of a difference shooting just a regular color profile, but this is where it makes the biggest difference is in V-Log. If you shoot 10-bit, it's going to be night and day better than shooting anything in 8-bit with this camera. So I hope this helps, and uh, I will see you in the next video.